Hello Indie Game fans, I have a selection of 1.0 releases from earlier in April in this video, but we do have representatives from my favourite genres including Metroidvania, roguelite, simulation, first person shooters, strategy and platformers, all this and more coming right up. Let's begin with Demon Turf Neon Splash, a standalone expansion to a criminally underrated 3D platformer which I think is pretty good. In the original, you play as the demoness Beeps, wanting to take over Hell, but in this adventure, she finds herself transported to a neon splattered surreal world, having to platform and to find a way to get back home. If you're not familiar with developer for Brass, they made the excellent 2D platformer Slime Sun as well, and looks like they're following the same playbook where every expansion comes with new mechanics and levels, but are released first as standalone entries. It's kind of smart if you think about it, since at a lower price point, it might get more players in the door, but this entry is quite the change from the visuals of the original. Alright, so PEMSA is technically not a game, but rather an emulator that allows you to sideload Pico 8 games, which, if you're not familiar, is a self-styled fantasy virtual console. However, along with this release are some Pico 8 classics like Celeste Classic, so for free, why not give it a go? This video is brought to you by Hats Are Not Allowed, an RPG fighting game where you lead a band of fighters against the robo-authoritarian regime. The setup in this world is absurd, where hats are banned, and any robot found wearing any headwear has to be destroyed on sight. Play as the hat wearer, a robot who just so happens to come into possession of such an object, battling against the regime to uncover its secrets and perhaps seize power for yourself. It plays like a fighting game where you have to find weaknesses in your opponent's defenses, but where there are RPG elements like equipment and stats to alter the results of combat. So if it looks good, do pick it up. To be honest, I do think that Animal Revolt Battle Simulator is kind of ugly since it looks like the developer jammed together a bunch of Unity assets and created a totally accurate Battle Simulator style title, but as it went through early access, I do think that it has some interesting ideas. If you're not familiar, games like this hits you against an enemy army where you have to choose and place your own units on screen but where the battle is automatic without player inputs. However, in this game, rather than being themed specifically, it allows you to combine everything from regular medieval soldiers to dinosaurs, ogres, demons, dragons, giant snakes and more, even having the ability to mount automatic rifles on them, adding to the chaos and insanity. Also of note is the ability to build custom units from the parts of others, which is just so weird and insane, where it just so happens that this type of weird and insane really resonates with people, making this worth a mention. Mm -hmm. 
we do also have the 1.0 release of Furry Fury, an online multiplayer physics beast rolling title that's pretty neat, with this surprisingly managing to sustain a little community of active players. You have experienced a partial brainwave extraction. Oh, okay. I am inside the mind of my greatest enemy. Let's mess shit up. I remember playing Serious Sam Tormento when it released in Early Access, where this action roguelite based on the storied IP felt pretty good to play, but lacked content and variety, where it does seem like Early Access has been good for this game, making the 1.0 release of interest. Smells like upgrades. What fresh hell is this? It has an interesting custom weapon system where you can mix and match parts to configure your gun how you like it, with new unlocks from run to run to keep things interesting, so I'm happy that it made it to the 1.0 release. The developer of the Metroidvania Blast Brigade vs the Evil Legion of Dr. Creed made a witty meta trailer so enjoy. Now that's what I call Metroidvania. So you want to make a top tier metroidvania. Blah blah blah, it's clear. Then strap in, it's time for a crash course. Let's start with a stellar setting, like a vampire's castle. Oh, how about an abandoned moon base? Actually, maybe not this time. A mysterious island. Oh yeah, a tropical crucible of crossroads, pitfalls and puzzles. Toss in a few nasty hazards, a roster of man-eating mobs, now we're cooking. And don't even get me started on those hidden treasures. Next up, the heroes of the tale. Secret agents, each with their own personal brand of bad guy bashing. What do we have here? Magnetic arm, a grapple hook, and you can switch between heroes in a flash. Perfect for reaching new places. Now let's add some firepower because, well, I mean, you gotta. That's right, keep going. Oh, I've gotta try that one. Upgrades and customizables, they're essential. Players are gonna do things their way, so make sure you give them the tools and modules to blast in style. We're definitely not saving the best for last, the villain, Insidious Dr. Creed, and the legion of baddies at his command. A giant mecha? Check. A radioactive monstrosity? Double check. Now you see why we need the firepower. There you have it, all the ingredients for a top tier Metroidvania. As you can see, we actually made the dang thing. This is our newest game, Blast Brigade. We'll see you on the island, Agent. We're done? Whew, I almost blabbed the secret ingredient. The key feature for the perfect Metroidvania, which we devs know is really... supposed to meet your cousin. He asked for your help. However, the room was empty. What's next? Let's kick off the top 3 with the 1.0 release of Forgive Me Father, an impressive cell shaded first person shooter that throws you into the midst of cosmic horror. This has the feel of an old school boomer shooter with plenty of guts and gore, as well as fast paced action, where you have an interesting mix of conventional and eldritch weapons at your disposal. This pain will never end. 
as is Lovecraftian horror tradition, the level of madness will affect the game and the horrors thrown at you, where interestingly, there are two playable characters as well, each with unique skill trees, making this a standout FPS in recent memory. Stacklands is a village builder where you stack guards to collect food, build structures, and fight creatures. The self-styled boy band of indie development, the four men Sock Pop Collective, releases many small games which are perfect for variety, where one of their latest, named Stack Lens, really took off, a village builder strategy title that is very charming, so let the developer explain. Get coins, which you can then use to buy card bags. You can advance in the game by finding idea cards. Ideas will tell you how to build certain things, so for example, you'll see that the house idea will tell you you need two wood and one stone to create a new house. And so if you stack those together, the villagers will start building it and you'll have a new house. Your villagers will have to eat every month, so always make sure you have enough food. My god, they have done it again. Swedish developer Landfall, best known for Totally Accurate Battle Simulator and Totally Accurate Battlegrounds, released another physics -y title which has taken off in Nightfall A Daring Journey, a medieval themed battle royale that features, wait for it, drifting horses. It is a first person title where you play as knights with guns, where up to 12 teams of two compete in a race to get the rules in the castle, stopping in towns to rest for the night, where there will be fewer and fewer towns as the game progresses. As such, it is an innovative twist on the genre, which is something that I love this developer very dearly for, in taking weird and wild swings at things, taking the number one spot. For more of the best indie games, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.